All right, day two, here we are. Um, so today's Friday, it's the end of a week and beginning of a weekend, which means I'm heading up to North Carolina. Um, I'm really excited because we're gonna take some fun cars up to the mountains. This is a annual event called Toge Fest. Toge meaning, you know, a mountain pass or mountain road. Um, it, it's really got its origins in the Japanese uh, car culture and driving in the mountains and everything like that. And so a lot of the people that really align with that and have found themselves, um, you know, in the Japanese car market um, are drawn to this event. Anyways, it's a good time. I've been for many years. I even sponsored it one year. Um, it's uh, it's a lot of fun. It's going to be cold, which not real excited about, but hopefully it won't be as bad as I've got in my mind. Um, so anyways, the car that I'm bringing, let's talk about that. So I am borrowing from Godzilla Motors. Uh, Godzilla is a JDM importer here in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, so definitely check them out on social and, and uh, Facebook, Instagram, and I believe they've got a website for it too. And check out their inventory. They've got some really cool stuff. But the specific car that I'll be taking this weekend is a Suzuki Cappuccino. So it's a tiny K car, K-E-I, um, and that's a regulation in Japan that if you build a car with a certain displacement motor and a certain maximum size, um, you can fall into this other category that I think is taxed very differently or might have an emissions uh, benefit or something like that. Anyways, they're very popular in Japan, not as popular in the US, but they're starting to be as people import them. Um, so I won't go too in depth about the car because if you really want to know about it, check out that dude in blue. He did a review on this car um, and I can link to it in the description. So take a look at that and check out the car. All right, just for comparison, look at the cappuccino next to just like a regular sized Mazda. I mean, this is hilarious. <laughs> There's so much space in this parking spot around this car. It's hilarious. Teeny tiny. But it's all the car you need. Just enough room inside. It's a fun little car. All the downforce. All right, so here's my setup of what I've packed. I've got just the basics, a uh, detail spray, which is just for touch-ups, anything that you need to clean up real quick, and a couple microfibers to handle that, kind of like a glass one, and then like one that can get real dirty. I've got a terry towel for checking oil and things like that. Um, this is found to be the, like the best tool. It's a Milwaukee 12 volt. This guy, um, you can set your tire pressure plug it in and it will go to that tire pressure. It's amazing. Um, got my little Milwaukee bag and this has every, all my essentials there. I've got, you know, an assortment of bits. I've got zip ties cause race car. Um, I got a tire pressure gauge. I really like, uh, these products by, um, Long Acre. They seem to be, um, loved by motorsports community. Um, gotta have your a uh, screwdriver. I've got a quick little um, socket set. So that's kind of your bare essentials. Then of course your gloves. So you don't make a mess of yourself because then you end up making a mess of the car. Um, yeah, that's, that's that. And I've got a spare battery for this guy. Probably won't even bring this. Um, then everything else I like to break into these cinch bags. So these cinch bags are awesome because they don't take up a lot of space. They partition everything really well. So I kind of dedicate each one to a purpose. This one, I can't really see, but I've just got it full of GoPros and GoPro accessories. So this is where I keep all of that, including a power supply, um, you know, all my suction cups and everything. But I gotta, got my GoPros in here. I've got cables and power supplies so things can be charging on the fly and I can hot swap stuff as needed. Then I've got another bag right here and this one I've uh, made for my 
overnight charging solution. So I always bring a power strip and the advantage of the power strip is you only occupy one plug-in spot in your hotel. Um, not that you won't have multiple, but if you have to go searching around the hotel to find everything you plugged in, you're gonna leave something. So this is big travel hack right there. And then I've got my all my chargers and everything for my walkie-talkies. So whenever I go up to the mountains, um, having communication that doesn't rely on the cellular network is key. These Baofengs are really affordable. You can accessorize them with like these uh, high um, uh, high capacity batteries and extended antennas and things like that. Uh, but they're really, they won't break the bank. So I just got a bunch of these and I can hand them out and loan them out as necessary. Um, I'll have another bag for clean clothes and another bag to transfer my dirty clothes into. Again, nice thing there is the one with dirty clothes. At the beginning of the day, it takes up no space. At the end of the day, it takes up all the space. Um, so it's, it's a good solution for me. So this is all pretty minimal and it'll fit in pretty much any space, even the cappuccino. So that's, uh, that's how I pack it. So this is, this is pretty much it. Um, I'll also have clothes on top of that and I'll probably bring a backpack that I've got my laptop in and might stuff a couple of the things in there, but that pretty much does it. So now it's time for me to get some rest, wake up at the crack of dawn and make my way up to North Carolina. So I can film another video tomorrow and talk about all the cool stuff we did with the cappuccino and uh, hopefully, hopefully we get some warm weather. All right, see you guys tomorrow.